Shall we begin? Stock Story is for education and entertainment. It is not for advice. Please do your due diligence before investing. Hey, how you doing? It's Doug here. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, why we invest for ourselves. Um, people often look at me and say, hey, why do you do that? And I say, because I think it's fun. And they look at me like they feel sorry for me. Uh, they also have a tendency to uh, think I'm either really smart or really stupid. Um, but the truth of the matter is, is there's a lot you can do and it's not really that difficult. So I've done it and I've done fairly well at it, uh, at least better than I was doing with mutual funds. And uh, I, I'm gonna, in this next little uh, presentation, I'm gonna show you uh, sort of how uh, we pay a lot for fees for things that are very similar to things we don't have to pay much for and things that we can beat as far as returns and try to explain some of those things. So it's really, it's really a cool thing that we can do this. It's very empowering and everything else. So uh, hopefully you'll take a look at this and maybe think about it uh, so you can do your own due diligence in taking a look at um, possibly doing investing for yourself because uh, it's really rewarding. It's great to know what your money's doing and it's wonderful to see that you can actually beat the mutual funds. And it's not to say mutual funds are bad. Some, some mutual fund investors are great, uh, but there's only so many of those that are really great. A lot of them don't beat the, the indexes. And so I guess what I'm saying is because only a few beat the indexes, uh, you're probably gonna beat a lot of uh, mutual funds because a lot of them on average have 2% fees and as a result, that comes off of their end result. So you don't have to beat them one-on-one, -on -one. you gotta beat them uh, minus where they're subtracting the 2% fee or, or whatever fee they're charging off of their return and that makes that puts you in the, in the driver's seat. Anyways, take a look at this um, and we'll be back after the presentation's over, thanks. So why do we manage our own investments? Uh, I can think of four what I consider really good reasons. The first one is it can be done in a timely manner. Oh, I knocked out two in the same time. Anyhow, no problem. Anyways, nowadays there's so much information on the internet that uh, uh, we have information on the financials of a company. We have technical charts that we can read. Uh, lots of news as it comes out. So we have a lot of information and I, I use a, a few sites that I really like like Guru Focus, Seeking Alpha, uh, Finviz, as well as a number of other ones, Globe and Mail, uh, and also even my Royal Bank uh, uh, online investing site has a lot of information. And if you have a true value approach to investing and you're also managing your portfolio based on uh, you know, levels of risk, like when you have overvaluations versus undervaluations, you can really minimize your downside. Uh, number three reason is it's really empowering. You get a real chance to understand your finances. Uh, it, it's, I know for me, I'm retired now, and it's really exciting to be able to uh, sort of have my plan within myself. In the old days when I had mutual funds, they would send me this very convoluted report which looked like they were just inching along very slowly and uh, uh, I didn't really know whether they're doing a good job or a bad job whereas when I'm doing uh, when I'm actually managing it myself I have a good idea whether I'm meeting the goals that I want to do and the biggest reason uh, is is next it's uh, it's I'll put it out here there we go, it's the high mutual fund fees. A lot of people, they go to their bank, they end up with a mutual fund, I did too. Uh, I think in Canada, the average around 2%, it can be like one and a half, it can be 2%, it can be 
some I've seen some that are two and a half percent, and it's really difficult for uh, your wealth to get forward that much. Um, I'm going to go over the first three items, and then the fourth one I'm going to put in a separate video, and I'll put them both up around the same time. So. So it can be done in a timely manner. As I said, there's so much information on the internet for investing. Um, there, you can use, if, if you're not into picking stocks, ETFs are an easy way, or they call it couch potato investing, where you can just invest in the index. And because they're like a tenth of the cost of the mutual funds, um, there's a better chance that they're going to outperform the mutual funds, mainly because of the uh, much lower management expense ratio. Uh, also, um, if you are into sticky, picking stocks, with all the information that we do have on the internet, you can actually, in a very short process, measure uh, the assets versus the liabilities of a company to see what their uh, tangible book value is worth, as well as uh, take a look at their earnings and see if you translated those out over a 10-year period, really what this company really should be worth uh, without growth. And then if you believe that it's got good opportunities of growth, that's just going to be gravy to help it help it advance. Um, value investing is not an active investing strategy, so you can take your time. Uh, I'm just going to move. There's a little sign here that's driving me nuts. Thank you. Uh, value investing is not an active investing strategy. Generally, you're going to do all your work up front, and then when you purchase it, uh, if you if you've done your homework, then you're going to hold that stock for quite a while. If you take some off the table, only be because it's appreciated quite a bit, and you're taking some off the table to have money to look at better values. Um, it's not as risky as you might think. Uh, you know, when you're valuing companies, you're not rolling the dice. You're actually looking at what that's worth per share, what what the company should be worth per share. So you're not just throwing out numbers. Uh, I, I often think of uh, chasing stock prices as being um, more like gambling, where you're just trying to predict what's going to happen next with the stock price. When you're doing value investing, you're basically looking at what the assets minus the liabilities are worth plus the earnings, and you're you're basically figuring out a price, and you're trying to buy it when the stock is cheaper than the actual value of the company. And if it goes down some more, then as long as you're comfortable that you did a good analysis, then, then you can believe that you could buy some more. Uh, managing portfolio allocations also reduces risk. Uh, I'll show uh, later on, but uh, as, you, as the market caps of the companies outpace the economy, as the price to book values of companies is way beyond historical numbers when price earnings is outpacing normal numbers, usually you can believe that the risk in equities is higher. And as a result, manage a portfolio that you don't have as much exposure to rec equities, where if it was the other way around, where all those uh, metrics were showing uh, very uh, cheap uh showing the stock market as being very cheap to the actual fundamentals, then you'd probably want to get exposed as much as possible to the equities. But when you're in a higher position, which I believe we are now, um, I would probably go 40 to 50 percent, or I do go 40 to 50 percent into uh, some type of bonds, cash holding, uh, possibly uh, gold in the situation where I believe that uh, countries have, uh, I don't know, uh, engineered their their, their uh, currency levels. And when you're valuing a company and you're buying it at a significant discount, you have a margin of safety, which is another way that you're reducing the risk when you, when, when you are purchasing stocks in a value investing method. Whereas when you're taking momentum stocks that have been running up, um, you do not have a mar don't necessarily have a margin of safety all the time. Sometimes you're buying an overvalued company, but you're buying it because of momentum. Uh, this is something that uh, my stock story thing is. It, I'm not about that part. I'm all about getting a deal, buying a dollar for fifty cents or or seventy cents. Anything where I'm going to have a, a stronger chance for an upside. And it empowers me. And I think I said before, it's great to know where, what my money is doing. 
Uh, it can be fun to watch the results of my decisions. It's great to have a plan and then watch it uh, come out as opposed to giving your money to the bank, getting these reports back and, and really not knowing whether they're succeeding in, in meeting it. And uh, uh, one of the things is you can become more knowledgeable about things. You can really tell what your money's doing. You can feel more confident in, in about probably what your long-term uh, future will be as far as your money goes and, and how to plan for that. Um, and you have the choice. You can choose to be a stock picker, which is a little more involved. It spend more time analyzing companies and trying to find company values and, and find companies that are, are selling cheap to their values. Or you can be an ETF holder and uh, uh, go for more of an index. Indexes often outperform the mutual funds. Or you can do, you know, you can buy a, an index ETF and buy some stocks as well. And so all these things can actually work out pretty well. So I did say that we were going to do uh, talk about the fees, but um, I'm trying to make these clips a little bit shorter for everybody because, uh, I don't know, the first one I did was 22 minutes long, and, and I'm thinking that's too long. I'd like to get more in the five to seven or eight minute range. And so uh, I've done the first three points, and I'm uploading the other video right after this one that goes into the detail on mutual fund fees and how it sometimes matches up with ETFs and do-it-yourself investing where you're actually stock picking. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed these three points and I hope you come back and uh, see, see the part on uh, mutual fund fees, ETFs, and uh, stock picking. Okay, have a great day, thanks. Thank you for watching. Please comment, like, share, and subscribe. Look forward to interacting with you. Have a great day.